All right, you guys ready for your first comedian? Very, very, very really funny girls. Very, very happy to have you here. They're here tonight. Please give it up for Katie Hannigan. <laughs> Katie. Yeah. Here comes Katie. Here comes Katie walking to the mic. For Charles, <laughs> probably gay. He is. <laughs> he dated my friend. <laughs> so gay, and he totally has HPV. <laughs> Ladies, watch out. <laughs> hey, it's gonna ruin Christmas. Um, so I have been sick. Ugh, not fun. I went to go pick up my prescription the other day and it was $98. Yeah, I have never felt so healthy. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, $98. You know what? Actually, uh, I'm suddenly feeling much better. <laughs> just put that back. It's probably a placebo. I will just take this Kit Kat. Yep, <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> oh my God. I, uh, my mom, she always told me, she said, you know, Katie, you need to marry a doctor. Just marry a doctor. I'm like, okay, mom, how am I going to meet a doctor other than continually going to different doctors? Because <laughs> my insurance is cutting me off. <laughs> Apparently, fear of dying alone is not covered. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have insurance. <laughs> no, I have comedian's insurance, which is laughing it off. <laughs> Cancer! Oh God! I did go. I did go to the doctor, and he was checking me with a stethoscope. This guy's really sweet, really positive. Um, married, I know, right? And so he's checking me, and he's like, "Breathe in, beautiful. Breathe out, amazing. Breathe in, incredible. Breathe out." Astonishing. I was like, oh my God, really? Me? <laughs> Listen, uh, what are you doing tonight? Because <laughs> you want to come to the comedy club with me? Because some of these late night shows are really brutal. <laughs> Love to get a diagnosis on my thighs. <laughs> right? Because I want to know if they're hot. Astonishing. You think so? Thank you. We had a connection. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I'm always really afraid of going to the doctor. Are you guys, have you guys ever like thought you had AIDS for like two years, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, I don't wanna find out, you know? Remember like when you were a little kid and you would go, you would get like a lollipop or a stick of gum? I think we should do that now. Like, hey, get an AIDS test, get a scratch off lottery card, right? You've already gambled with your life, so. It's the least, the least they could do. Um, I used to play doctor a lot when I was little. I know. <laughs> Looking back, I'm like, ooh, gross. I can't believe I was pretending to marry for money. <laughs> um, I just found out that uh, I have mice in my apartment, which is terrifying. I have mice. A lot of people uh, are really surprised that I don't have cats, which I think is discouraging, right? <laughs> No cats, thank you. I, uh, I do have three roommates, they're all girls, and these bitches are no help. We found, we found a little mouse caught on the glue trap. It's like two in the morning, the ladies are screaming. One of my roommates is a British model, which is not important, it's just jealousy. And so, she had a great idea. She was like, I know, Katie, why don't we just call a man? I was like, listen, it's two in the morning. In America, that counts as asking for it. Okay. She goes, no, no, we could call Larry, you know, from the pizza place. I'm like, uh, the guy with the face tattoos? Okay, yeah, let's let him into our apartment. It's like, listen, I don't want to be a bitch about this, but it seems like you ladies haven't spent hours reading rape prevention chain emails, okay? Oh, I know, why don't we just call that homeless guy who's always throwing furniture at people on the street? Okay? He can come up, eat the mouse, and then claim our apartment. <laughs> They like that better than my other idea, which was, hey, four ladies, we each take a leg, hmm? 
Last one to let go is the next one to get married. Yeah. They hate me. <laughs> and uh, so I've been getting some advice from people in the building what to do. And I live in the East Village, so it's all homeopathic nonsense. Just total mumbo jumbo. Somebody was like, put out peppermint oil. It's like, that's food, right? <laughs> They're coming for She's like, no, no, they don't like it. Okay, well, I bought it. It smells like candy. Okay. One of my neighbors was, he said, you know, Katie, we just spray cat urine all over the apartment. Just spray it down. Okay, Ted, you have a different problem. <laughs> and then my favorite piece of advice came from Rose. She lives underneath us. She said, Katie, just go into the center of your space. Announce yourself and say, Mice, you are not wanted here. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Can mice understand human speech? <laughs> because I've been killing them. <laughs> oh, I'm a monster. <laughs> I have to take care of my own mouse problem because I am a single lady. Thank you. Thank you. Prefer to think of myself as alone. <laughs> Right. Where's the single ladies in here? Ladies! Gotta go out for ladies night, right? Ladies! Gotta go out for ladies night! Woo! Right? I have to go out for ladies night at least once a month just so I can be like, ah, oh, it's still the worst. <laughs> I never have a good time because my girlfriends are too hot, right? They're like, sex in the city is single. They're like, ooh, I fucked this guy. Ooh, my martini. I'm like, I think I accidentally threw away $5. <laughs> My girlfriends like to party really hard. These girls party. Any ladies in here, you ever thought you were roofied? Turns out you just had 15 drinks. That's how my girlfriends do it. You get that phone call, right? Morning after, you guys know what I'm talking about. Katie, oh my God, I don't remember getting home last night. I think I was roofied. I'm like, oh my God, Lauren, well, what did you have to drink? Well, I just had like three or four martinis. I had a couple double gin and tonics, and then I had a shot of Patron, and then I had a glass of Pinot Gris, and <gasps> that was when I started losing consciousness. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, listen, I don't want to jump the gun, but you may have roofied yourself. <laughs> it takes a pretty devious rapist to roofie someone, then make sure they safely get to their ex-boyfriend's apartment at three in the morning. <laughs> Just put your right in a cab, you know? Suspicious. I, uh, I just quit drinking, actually. I've been, uh, I have, it's been a month. It's been a little over a month since my last terrible blackout. <laughs> uh, so, and I've been telling people, I'm like, yeah, I quit drinking. Everyone's like, oh my God, sober for a month. And I'm like, oh no, no, I'm not sober. I'm just smoking twice as much weed. So, <laughs> I am compensating, <laughs> don't worry. But, you know, eventually, obviously, the goal is, Quit weed, focus on cocaine exclusively. <laughs> Just taking it a day at a time. <laughs> God, it's hard to meet guys when you're not drunk, right? I mean, I have a, a loft bed in my apartment, so you know, you definitely need alcohol to get somebody into that. It is just, it makes it really impossible to have casual sex, you know what I mean? You just, you cannot maintain an air of nonchalance while you're hoisting yourself up an eight foot ladder. <laughs> I tried to play it off too. I'm like, you, uh, you wanna take this up a level? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bunk bed. Yeah, that's what I. Forget it. Just go. You know, like if I wasn't so desperately lonely, I would at least mention it before we left the bar, right? Like, hey, you wanna come back to my place? Got a little bottle of wine. By the way, my bed's barely a foot from the ceiling. <laughs> so, don't worry, it's not awkward at all. If you're wasted, bottoms up. <laughs> Let's make a baby. What? <laughs> I don't know. I, I always feel like when you're dating somebody, you always get to that certain point where uh, you just, uh, you want to get the details, right? Let's face it, you met through a computer, you know? I just like to get out there. I say, hey, what do you like? What do you like in the bedroom? Oh my God, is it butt stuff? I'm not going to judge you. Oh my God, just tell me! <laughs> Finally, he's like, oh, I want to pee all over you. I'm like, oh, you have to feed my cats. <laughs> That's what I do in my date. That's why I don't go on a lot of second dates, guys. 
<laughs> Too many dates to the dart room, huh? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I was reading. I was reading about Chinese foot binding, and uh, I know I'm weird. And uh, that was actually started by an emperor who had a foot fetish. So can you imagine finding that out about somebody on date number seven? Right? You're like, so what are you into? Well, I like a girl whose feet have been broken between the ages of three and six and systematically deformed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> still work on Wall Street. <laughs> Foot binding, really bad for women. I think it was the worst for the girls who got it just as it was going out of style. Right? Like, oh, haven't you heard? Big feet are in. Uh, I've never walked. <laughs> Don't feel bad. You know, It went on for like a thousand years, but finally a lot of missionaries went over, proved to everybody that ladies are much better off with deformed waists. So... I'm glad I'm a modern woman, right? Modern ladies. Ladies night. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if in a hundred years they'll be like, oh, can you believe those ladies used to rip out their pubic hair and put needles in their faces? <laughs> now cut off my fingers. <laughs> Think about it. Um, I have to go. I'll tell you one quick thing, though. I, the last guy I was dating... <laughs> He asked me if I would dress up in this French maid costume, and God, I was really hesitant because I have been tricked into cleaning before. <laughs> All right, Katie Hannigan, have a good night. Yeah.